finally, after all these years, got an understanding to why our so-called black brothers and sisters in this country and around the world are so mistreated and especially in this country are so oppressed. It's because they are the true chosen people of the Most High God. They are the true Hebrew Israelites. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. Wow. First of all, I just want to say a very big thank you to all of you, my wonderful, wonderful followers and subscribers for your amazing reactions to the video we just published on the Black Jesus. A bunch of reactions. And I'll get to that later. But before I get to that, I want to plead with you, please. Yeah? Do your best. To subscribe to this channel do your best to click on the notification button so that whenever we upload any one of these inspirational contents you'll be among the first to see them all right and then again remember please to always share my videos and then to also always download these videos because you know uh, our channel is on the intense censorship from YouTube. You know that already. I mean, this is an old gist. I mean, I'd already stopped worrying about it. I'd stopped talking about it. It doesn't bother me anymore. But I'm just concerned about you because every single truth that I share, I'm not sharing it so that I will get to know it. I already know it. I share it so that you can have access to it. And it hurts my spirit when I post some of these videos and then wake up the next day and realize the video is gone. It breaks my heart. And that's why I set up that Rumble channel. But even before we talk about Rumble, make sure that you who are on YouTube who will say, I don't have a Rumble account, that you always download these videos before they wake up and decide to take them down. Okay? There are so many things going on with my channel. I've even seen some people comment that, oh my goodness, this channel is under some intense censorship. I do know that. I have seen people tell me, Brother Joe, I am subscribing to your channel and I don't know who is unsubscribing me in real time. I am subscribing and someone from back end is unsubscribing me. The guy even told me that he's done it several times. He's tired now. A lady also complained the same thing to me. And then look at the views of my videos. You go to back end analytics, you see how the views are soaring out of proportion. Then you come to the front end. And you look at the views, sometimes it's even static. Sometimes they leave it at 18,000 while the video is trending and it doesn't go anywhere. It stays on 18,000 for like maybe two, three days. And you're wondering what's going on. There's so many views in the back end. Why, why it's not reflecting here? So there's just so much going on. But you know, I don't like paying attention to all of that because that's not, I'm not a career YouTuber. I am just a truther, a passionate truther who wants to make sure that any truth that I find necessary or interesting for you guys to know, I want to share it with you. So anything that we impede on you gaining access to that affects me a lot. Now, let's get to the video that we just published on Black Jesus, all right? So on that video, I got a lot of reactions, yeah? And it's expected when you publish a video that is like that, it's almost like you know, one of those videos you will call controversial or sensitive topic or something like that. I don't even think it's controversial. I think it's probably a sensitive topic, not controversial topic, right? So it's expected that a lot of people are going to come up with different reactions. I heard people who said, Joe, God bless you for posting this video. I saw people who said, well, I don't care if my Jesus is black or white. All I know is I love him the way he is. And then there are people who say, Joe, you're being racist. Are you saying that our white brothers? In fact, that was the one that really hit me because... I, I have said this several times. There is nothing in me that gravitates towards racism that will ever gravitate towards racism because I am by nature a very, very, very non-racist human being, very accommodating and loving person. I just happen to be completely passionate about speaking the truth. That's who I am. I don't care whether my truth is affecting a white man or it's affecting a black man, a tall man, a short man. I don't care your complexion. I don't care your race or where you come from. As long as I know I have got, gained access to the truth, I just share it. 
I told people in previous videos that the thing that I love to do the most is when I see the truth dressed in any beautiful apparel, I like to strip that truth naked. It's the only time I want to see someone's nakedness. It's the truth. And I want to share that nakedness with you. That's, that's all I'm doing. I've told you guys, my best partners today, business partners, are white people. We are still partners till tomorrow. Not like I used to have them as my partners. All my business partners today, 99% of them are white people. From the UK, from the US, from Eastern Europe, different places. And we've never had any issues. I love white as much as I love black. And you know, I am not the only person doing what I'm doing. There are a lot of white people who go even way deeper than I have gone on these so-called sensitive issues. And I'm going to share some of the videos with you right now. They are white. But these are people like me who are so given to speaking the truth that they don't care even about the complexion they have or the color of their skin. That should not be a barrier. If you are a passionate truther, you will never care whose ox is gored when you set out to speak the truth. And this is what happens to me. Now, I'm going to share with you a video here that will interest you. So please, pay attention and watch this video and tell me what you think about it. My testimony in how I, a Gentile white male, who grew up in a conservative evangelical community, um, how I uh, became awoken to who the true chosen people of God are, the true Hebrew Israelites really are. And to share the, the entire story, I, I will say a question. And he said, my son, they are my true chosen children. They are the true chosen people of me. And to back up that voice, he led me to Deuteronomy chapter 28, where in the first time in my life, those words bounced off and penetrated my heart, and I wept and I wept when I finally, after all these years, got an understanding to why our so-called black brothers and sisters in this country and around the world are so mistreated and especially in this country are so oppressed. It's because they are the true chosen people of the Most High God. They are the true Hebrew Israelites that are in another Egypt of America under a 400-year curse due to the disobedience of their forefathers, and that the Jews that we have thought have been fooled by are not the true chosen people, but they are what Revelations talks about as the imposters, Jewish, like something, but not the real something. But our Hebrew Israelites of today are our so-called black brothers and sisters and that answer finally came. I wasn't brainwashed. I wasn't coerced. I wasn't in a camp. Imagine how anti-Semitic that would have been coming from Joseph Okechuku if it wasn't that a white man was the one making this submission. The people you find there in Israel, he says, are the imposters, Jewish, the wannabe Jews, the real Hebrew Israelites, the black man, you and I. Why is it that all of a sudden this truth is just jumping up from everywhere? Everywhere. From blacks, from whites, from Asians. You see people coming out with truth. It looks like the spirit of the Most High Yahuwah has just fallen on everyone. The younger people, the young generation. And people are just coming out with the truth left, right and center. And the moment the truth begins to come out, the so-called overlords, the evil men at the top of the pyramid will begin to lose their hold on all of humanity. And they either are going to create a massive global war or they will just basically disappear from everywhere.
That's a white man. That's not Joseph. That's what truth does to you. It overwhelms you. It overpowers you. It doesn't give you any space to be you. It just takes over everything in you. It begins to force itself to come out. Like a baby that wants to come out during the time of labor. You can't do anything to keep that baby on the inside. A baby must come out. The water breaks and the baby comes out. All you got to do is just aid the coming out of the baby. That's when you do the push. That's how truth is. Watch another video. You remember this interview when Hillary Clinton said, we came, we saw, he died. Well, she was talking about Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. And he had just overseen the construction of the great man-made river, which people were calling the eighth wonder of the world. It required 1,700 miles of underground pipes, 1,300 water wells. This thing was absolutely massive. And Gaddafi famously said that we will turn the desert green and he would offer free land and livestock to citizens who were willing to start farms. And if you got married and agreed to start a family, you would be eligible for $50,000 in loans at 0% interest. These were massive pro-Libya, pro-family policies. And he was trans positioning the Libyan dinar back to the gold standard. There was talk of it becoming the official currency of Africa. But of course, that would be a massive threat to the Western banking powers. And he was talking about selling petroleum in the Libyan dinar, which again would be a major threat to the Western banking powers. Because the dollar is not backed by gold, it's backed by oil, and the dollar is the world reserve currency. This is why I write children's books on the banking system. So they didn't just kill Gaddafi. They bombed the great man-made river and the factory that made the pipes. But all we get from the powers that be is lies. But we can teach our kids about the banking powers. Fake news. How information is controlled. Rights fundamental to being an American. It's what freedom requires. I'm pretty sure you saw the color of his skin, right? That's a pure white man. A pure white man. What is he talking about? He's talking about Africa, our continent. He's talking about the same things that I have talked about even up to the recent video that I published on Black Jesus. I spoke about, you see why I'm obsessed with the memory of Gaddafi? You see why I miss Gaddafi more than I could ever have missed any other leader that once lived on the continent of Africa? I said it in that video. This guy was on the verge of turning around the destinies of the African continent. He was on the verge of turning us into a first world continent. He had what it could have taken. Did you see all the things that this man was doing? They came and took him out. Did you see the life that Libyans were living better than people in the Western world? And they came and took him out and they called him a bad name before they took him out. Why was he able to do all of this? Because he nationalized their oil wealth and stopped allowing the colonials to take away all the resources in their land and give them 2% or 3% or 4% royalty like they do to almost every other colony in Africa today. He was already planning at that time to transition the Libyan currency to gold standard, to back it with gold because your currencies in all your countries in Africa, none of them is backed with gold. Currencies are meant to be backed with gold. They are backed with nothing. They are fiat. That's what they call them. Common toilet papers. You lose them, you lose them. They have, there's no value behind your currency. This man wanted to do that. Little wonder, today, BRICS is now about to do the same thing. Another thing he wanted to do that BRICS is now doing is selling the oil in their own local currency and not using the petrodollar for exchange in their energy trading. BRICS is doing that now and has encouraged all the BRICS allied nations to begin to sell their natural resources in their own local currencies so that value will be piled up on your currencies. This was Gaddafi before they took him. 
they saw all of this coming. They, they could see Africa just emerge out of darkness into the light. And they were like, this man, we need to take him out or else we're going to lose Africa. Because Africa was meant to be lost by them anyway. The loss is happening right now in real time. That's what you see happening. That's why Russia says, I, I said it in that video, that I am 100% sure that it is because of what happened to Gaddafi that Russia and co have now decided, you know what? No more operating behind the curtains. We're stepping out now. We're going out front to help Africans to break loose and break free from the shackles of neocolonialism. And that's happening right now actively everywhere you turn on the continent of Africa. They've started with the French colonies. It's going to get to the Anglophonia ones. They will get to the British colonies and all the other little colonies out there in Africa. All of them are going to be free. The journey has begun and Africans have woken up and they are still waking up every day. These truths are what will set us free. That's the truth. And it's a white man again telling the truth. Some of you say, oh, I don't care whether my Jesus is white or black. You don't understand. If you understand what psychological warfare is all about, if you understand how mind control works, you would never let that come out of your mouth. If both of us are in a public place and they are introducing people, and they say, this one is someone Tinubu. The first thing people want to know is, is it related to the president of Nigeria? The moment they find out just that name alone, the treatment is different. Even the person who is Tinubu, even if he's not directly connected to the if you see the psyche, the way he carries himself, it's totally different from the one who bears one name that nobody knows. The power of psychological warfare the power of identity crisis. They want you to have identity crisis. That's why they don't want you to know that the one who came from heaven to earth to save humanity actually took on the physical body of a black man. Because if you know that, it will inform your demeanor, your composure, your disposition, your character, your mannerism everywhere you go. You will carry yourself differently when you know it does something to your psyche. That's why it's called psychological warfare. Look at the impact it's having on our people who have now thought that it belongs to the white people. Go and watch all over social media. You'll see plenty of white people revealing the same truth as well. It's not just coming from me. And you say you don't care if your savior is black or white because you don't care about the truth. We have been engaged in a serious psychological warfare almost all our lives. A war that we had almost lost until the truth began to come out. Do you think it is bombs and guns they used to hold you down and say that you are under mental and psychological slavery in Africa? Psychological slavery, you don't need a gun. You need psychological warfare as a weapon. And that's what we are breaking. The chains are the things we are now destroying. The shackles, we are breaking them. Take it out of your mind. Even if you don't care about whether your Jesus is black or white, just take the truth and let it sink in your heart. That yes, he, he, he actually is, he was a black man on earth. And what would you do now? The action you need to take now, you go to those villages Go to those places where our people in the villages are hanging white white. All the artists in Africa, I am challenging you today. Begin to mold images of black Jesus everywhere. And I'm not an image guy. You know me. I don't, there are a lot of ceremonies I don't believe in Christendom. There are so many things. You don't know. You know, when I speak, I speak based on the point I'm dealing with. And people don't understand. The day I am going to come up with the truth about the name Jesus, it will shake almost everywhere in Christendom because I will come with the goods. I will come with the proofs so that you tell me what is the meaning of that name. What is the meaning of God? Is his name God or Yahuwah? Is his name Jesus or Yahusha? We will get to that. 
See, the truth is not comfortable. And if you're a truther, or if you enjoy the truth or love the truth, you will never have a lot of friends. And I'm already used to it. I'm not begging for friends. I will speak the truth and shame the devil at all times. I've gotten extremely busy nowadays. But watch, very soon, I'm going to come up with those truths. So for me, for now, Africans, African artists, no matter you who you are, where you are, Uganda, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, wherever you are, you guys begin to paint. Stop painting all those white-looking things. You are helping them to mentally colonize our people. Throw them away. Paint the black ones. Go and evangelize and tell them, do you know that that savior you are pursuing inside the churches, that he actually was having your kind of skin. He came from amongst you. Give them the picture to put in their homes. You will see what it will do to younger generation coming up. By the time they read all those fancy things about him in the Bible and now see that, oh, he actually was a black man. The next thing they will say is, so there is a superpower in me as a black man to do great things. If one of us came and took over the whole world and white, black, Asian, everybody is worshipping him and calling his name, that means that I have so much more in me than I am being told. That's the psychological empowerment that comes from knowing. Don't tell me it doesn't matter. It does matter a lot. Watch children growing up and knowing this. Let's have animation videos. I can even fund and sponsor some of them. Let's tell movie stories these days down and tell them and let it revolve around the black one. Because that's just the truth. Nothing more or less. When you have enough dose of mental ego, you can walk into a place, my goodness, and everybody will feel your presence there. I have that type of thing. When I walk into a room, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing. People must know that someone just stepped in here. When a president steps into a place, you know there is an aura that comes with you. There's the charisma that you cannot mistake. Gosh, this is how it should be. So know it. Imagine if you be walking around as a slave the whole time. Everywhere you come, you, you, you shrink like a chicken that has been bitten by the rain. And then all of a sudden, you wake up one day and they told you that your father owns the entire estate where you live, where you are living in a boy's quarter. That all the people there are your father's tenants. What? Can you imagine what will happen to your psyche? Can you imagine what will happen to your brain? You tell me it doesn't matter? No, it matters. It matters. Anyway, so that's my little reaction <laughs> on that video. I am very passionate about these things, as you can see. And like I said, a lot of truths are still going to come out. A lot of truths. You know, I pray to God Almighty, I don't want to be too busy to do the work that God has asked me to do, which is to speak the truth to my people. I will always speak that truth, you know. I will always make out time. Just wait for me. Wait for me. One day, one day, one day, one very good day, we will dig into all those other deeper things so that we will know the truth because you know what the same scripture says? It said it is the truth you know that will set you free. If you don't know the truth, you will not be free. You may not be walking around with shackles on your wrists and on your ankles, but the shackles that are in your brain, in your mind, are so heavy that it will take a miracle to even tear them down. And that's what we are doing this way. They took the shackles away from us physically and then they relocated them into our minds and we have found where they kept them. That's why we are bringing them out and tearing them away. So you can be free in your minds. This is what it takes. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to download it. Remember what I told you in the beginning. Download the videos. Download the videos. I love you. You know, you can't question my love for you, right? You know that, right? I love you with all my heart. 
and please keep me in your prayers as long as i have the opportunity i will always keep sharing whatever truth i find with you i know you follow me and subscribe to my channel because you also love the truth and i really appreciate you don't ever stop sharing the truth okay i love you with all my heart and i pray that god will keep you and be with you in all that you do god bless you